Diaries of a Madman By What Must I Do? Chapter 196 Part 1 of 5 The three of us appeared in a small forest glade. I expected it to be time for more messages, but then Moonbeam and two bowing changelings appeared. Is this a memory? I ask. It is, my guide replied. The tree in you is making you see things again. My glade has more water and is much more impressive. Cool. You say you have a message from Navarone. Mooney said, leaning forward slightly. Where did you run into him? Nav rescued us from an underwater city controlled by magical beings of water, my queen, the same changeling said. He brought us to pony territory and cut us loose with enough gold to get here. An underwater city? How did you survive? And what were you doing there? There are pockets of air, the other changeling said. And we, survived on whatever emotions we could find. I was disguised as a guard on a noble's vessel. It was attacked by pirates and I was left for dead on the sinking ship. The sea ponies saved me and brought me to the city. And I was infiltrating a dog pirate clan, the other said. We were hit by a storm and went under. The sea ponies saved me. Two. Sea ponies. Hum. What was Nav doing there? Did his ship sink? He was there to meet with the water beings. Apparently he brought two more to the city. My, oh my, what is my precious little human up to? From what we gleaned and overheard, they're looking for some manner of magical artifacts, along with more of the beings of water. They intend to collect all of them together. Hum. Perhaps it's time I spoke with Celestia. It seems she's hiding some things from me. So, what was his message? He sends his greetings, along with a promise to visit within the coming months. I'm inclined to believe something he seeks is nearby. Oh, that would be delightful, she said with a cute grin. Did he have anything else to say about me? Well. He told us you had been captured by. Princess Celestia. He speaks the truth, though he may not have mentioned that he helped her fight me. It is no matter. Did he say anything else at all? Only one thing, the other said. But. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to repeat. Ah. Yes, Nav is fond of his lascivious remarks. I'll make sure to speed a few things along to impress him. He's an amazing hero, one said, his tail wagging slightly. The manic look in his eyes led me to believe it was the crazy one. We were down there for so long, but he pulled us free like it was nothing. Nav has a habit of pulling off all manners of surprising things, Moonbeam said. You will have some time to rest here in the capital, so I'm sure you'll hear all about Navarone's exploits. He even has his own statue. So, my queen, what do you intend to do with us, the sane one asked. First, you are going to tell me everything you know about Nav and those he is with. All of his followers, his ship, and especially any of his lovers. He's been too far away for me to spy on for long, the two of them shared a short look. Then, you will tell me all you know about this city, its inhabitants, and its rulers. What about, us, the guy asked. That made her blink. What about you? We don't have anywhere to go. Oh. After my ignominious capture, I was forced into a treaty with the ponies. Part of that is a guaranteed source of food. You will be given a place here until I have need of you. Now is Nav still with that dragon hussy? The memory turned grey, so I walked over to kiss Mooney on the nose. That's weird, Mommy, Taya said. No it's not, you're weird. I walked away from my buggy love, though. It's good to know she's spying on me, but it's honestly not that surprising. I like her, but do you really want to live underground? Taya asked. Isn't that kind of bad for us? It is bad for us, I said. That's one of the other big problems with her, aside from the mysterious deal. That said, there's no reason in particular for her to continue living underground, aside from the convenience of not having to change your capital city. 
Let's say your only choices were royals. Who would you pick? Celestia, she immediately replied. You're already a national hero in Ekestria, so it would be super easy to explain it. You'd gain all of her authority, we'd live in the most comfortable palace in the world, I'd get access to all her forbidden spellbooks, and you can continue fooling around with whoever you want since you literally own her. It's a win across the board and I still can't understand why you didn't just marry her when we brainwashed her. That's because you lack empathy, I said, reaching down to pinch her cheek. It feels wrong to brainwash someone into loving me. You're, like, the only one who thought so, Taya said. Doesn't that mean we're in the right? No, I won because I had the better arguments that convinced enough people that I was correct. To start with, brainwashing in general is bad. But adding on forced marriage just goes a little too far for me. So Celestia is out of the running. Taya asked. Don't tell me you're seriously considering that bird brain. Gilda is extremely smart and marrying her would have, advantages. It would also have difficulties. I'm doubtful about her. I'd rather have Moonbeam than Gilda, Taya said. And if she can spoil us as much as Celestia, I'd say the two of them are on par. But Celestia would be better for your reputation, I think. Choices, choices. So what's the takeaway from this one? What did you think about your time in Atlantis? Fear ask, making Taya jump. That's fear, I said. Luna. Taya ask. She's probably the scariest person I've ever met. She's also done several terrifying things to me. And to answer the question, I didn't really think much about it. We went down there, spent a few minutes talking to some of the prisoners, met with the leaders, then left. I haven't really thought much about it since, though seeing Aurora and the ex-pirates was interesting. I guess Sketch also became an employee, so there's that. You think so little of events that change others so much, Reason said. And that's Reason, of course, I said. Twilight. Taya asked. Reason? How did that happen? I'm still trying to figure it out myself. And I guess I did kinda change history in Atlantis, didn't I? I rescued two of the sailors directly and kinda sorta helped the rest out. I also got their leaders to agree to abandon their thrones to follow me on my mad quest. So why is fear here? I don't remember really being afraid. You were, for a few reasons, fear replied. First, you thought being in the clutches of five water elementals while so far away from your crew was scary, because they could easily wipe out flow and change you without anybody finding out. Second, because you had no idea if they'd agree to your proposal and you had already been through so much getting just as far as you had. And third, because you didn't know if they'd let you, the only human, leave the supposed safety of their underwater prison. You're always tense, so I didn't notice, Taya said with a shrug. But do you really think the elementals would have tried keeping you down there? According to Flo, they decided to let me stay free by a single vote. And given what Aqua did to me, I have no doubt in my mind that they would have forced me to become a sea princess or something stupid like that. So why did you take the risk? Fear ask. Because as Payne put it, I had given up. I was going to take any risk, no matter how big or small, to forward my goal. The way I figured, I warned everyone beforehand that I probably wasn't the best leader and everything would likely end up with us all horribly dying so it was only fair for me to go full retard. Wow. Thanks for having our best interests at heart, mommy. What, suicide wasn't bad enough to kill your faith in me? Oh man, you ain't seen nothing yet. Don't be silly. Taya said, jumping up to hug me. I could never lose faith in my mommy. You disappoint me a lot, though. That's why I was doing my best to keep your expectations of me low. Then you should have been a worse mommy. She slid down, her smile disappearing. I never really understood how much all of this affected you. Why don't you ever explain your motivations to me? Or how you feel? 
because communication is hard. This coma is our dam breaker. I'm done with the secrets and nonsense between us. You get to see how I feel firsthand. First hoof. That too. Now, shall we keep this gravy train rolling? Are you sure that's your desire, my guide asked. I think you can guess what's next. I knew it was coming, I sighed. I was hoping I'd get through it before Taya arrived, but it seems the fates conspired against me yet again. What are you? Oh no. Is it the bunker? It is, my guide said with a nod. Taya, I didn't tell anyone but Celestia the full story. We are about to walk into a nightmare. I don't know how much of the sheer terror I felt will transfer into the coma, but I've run into a few boss rooms. This will probably be one of them. Are you ready? My mama ain't raised no bitch, she replied with the most adorable grin ever. I love you. Let's do it. My guide giggled and her eyes finally flashed, sending us into the darkness. Taya and I appeared in a narrow shaft. I immediately pushed her out of the doors and jumped right as the first elevator crashed down. She was still struggling to her hooves when the second crash knocked her back down. I yanked my sword out and faced down the long hallway as she caught her breath. What was that? Taya asked. Elevators. I took a quick stock and discovered all I had besides my clothing was the sword and a flashlight. While you're here, expect to see and hear things that aren't actually there. Also be prepared to fight at all times, because the bunker can manifest spirits to hunt you. So is the plan to kill on sight. You can't kill what's already dead. If it's at all possible, wait for my orders to start attacking. Especially if it's a clown. Not everything here was hostile, just the vast majority of it. Is this where you started, she asked. It is. I fell down that shaft right there and hit both elevators on the way down. Hitting them broke the cables and knocked them down right as I hit the ground. Then I walked this way for a few minutes before running into a room full of skeletons. Shall we? Where's the guide? Taya asked as we began moving. The spirits may or may not show up in boss rooms. We might see or hear some of them later. But in the bunker, the flashlight was my guide. When I fell down the shaft, it shattered. I guess something haunted it, because it worked fine when nothing was around but started to freak out whenever the dead were acting up. It didn't take us long to come across what I assumed was Artyom's skeleton on the floor. I started hearing whispering as soon as it came within sight. Do you hear that, my filly asked. Yes. This is the first body I ran into, the first sign I had that humanity really did exist in the past. I heard whispering around the bodies back then, too. I... Can't really understand it, though, she said. What's it saying? Who cares? I continued walking and she jumped to follow. Most of the spirits had sob stories. I don't see why his is supposed to be special. Then why did you stop? I blinked and realized that I had, in fact, stopped. Not only did I stop, but I knelt down and picked up the skull with a trembling hand. Artyom. My mouth whispered. Whoa, is that the ghost? Taya asked. Instead of waiting for a reply, she used magic to rip me away from the body, making me scream. Thankfully, she slapped me upside the face, finally killing the possession. What the fuck? I said. Taya, destroy those bones. Before her horn could light up, I heard the rattling of a chain and something started choking me. Don't you dare, someone behind me screeched. Taya gasped and jumped back. I finally looked up and saw a very pissed off Russian ghost lady floating over me, using the collar and chain connecting us to try and choke me. First you steal my body, now you try to kill me. What the fuck is wrong with you? I won't let you touch him. He's kinda already dead. She stopped trying to kill me and floated over to his skull. Oh. My love. Why must I be chained to one so heartless, so vile? Wasn't this your fault? I ask. Didn't you try to take over my body or whatever? 
how was I supposed to know it was occupied? You have no, no light. Your filly shines so brightly, but there is nothing in you. And now that I have seen who you are, I have no desire to be attached. Good, I'm looking for a way to get my own soul. I don't want a used one that's already claimed by a god or whatever. Maybe I can trade you to death for the soul of a viking or something. Surely a pure soul would be worth ten of those barbarians. Their god carried a hammer. Your god was nailed to a cross. Now, will you stop bitching and let us keep going if we carry the skull? I promise we won't watch if you want to do weird things to it. It was obvious she wanted to keep complaining, but she managed to rein herself in with some visible effort. You are correct, he is dead. There is no sense crying over the vessel when I know I will find his soul in the next life. So can I try killing her now? Taya asked. Only if she starts choking me again. With luck, she'll shut up and disappear again. I can hear your thoughts, Ava coldly replied. Then why are you still here? You should know exactly how wanted you are. I cannot always manifest, but something about being here in this bunker. You are in this coma to better yourself, or so you say. From your actions, I see how little you've learned. My God preached love and betterment. I know he was once yours, too. Perhaps I can help show you back to him. Oh boy. So the things you've seen over my shoulder haven't convinced you yet that Jesus probably wasn't really all that divine? My assumption is that he was just a mage who liked helping people. And the Old Testament God was likely just some dude who drank from a magic fountain and started ruling over people who didn't. Perhaps. But there's more to religion than God. Shall we continue? I started walking, the ghost easily floating behind me. So are we just gonna accept this? Taya asked. Sure, why not? I don't know how to make her fuck off, I doubt you can kill her, and I'm tired of hearing her complain. Okay. So who's God? Before Ava could start proselytizing, we entered the large greeting room that had been turned into a impromptu food storage. Why are there so many skeletons here? Ava slowly asked. They, they told us this place was sealed. They were keeping humans here to eat, I said. See how most of them are missing limbs? One of the visions I had was of your husband trying to get in here. The guard said it was food storage. Gross, Taya said. How? How could this have happened? Ava slowly whispered. E everyone here was so kind at first. Another vision I saw had one of the leaders talking about how their farms kept breaking down. Were there food shortages? There were, problems upon problems. But how could we do this to each other? Discord. He visited the bunkers one by one, clearing them out. This bunker got a signal from the other groups of survivors but chose to ignore it. That means they never got the warning. So it is his fault my Artyom perished. It's his fault that all of humanity perished. You can read my mind, right? Why don't you already know all of this? I dug into your memories once. I quickly decided it wasn't worth it. Lucky, Taya muttered, kicking a nearby bone. So why aren't these whispering? They stopped being humans before they died, I said. And cattle don't have much to say. I wish I could slap you right now, Ava said. Sucks for you. I continued walking to the next door. Through it was the barricade where Artyom got shot. Since I didn't want to hear more of her sob story, I refrained from pointing it out as we entered the next large room. This is where we were given our jobs, Ava said, looking around. And this is where my first bad feelings about this place came in. See that third door? I ask. At the moment, it was the only one that was open. I do, she slowly said. There's a furnace in there. If there were any undesirables, they murdered them on the spot. So how did you find that out, Mommy? Taya asked. Because that was the only door open before, too. I almost got cooked. Taya, blow open the middle door. 
her horn lit up and she started cutting through it. You don't want to blow it up. We're underground, mommy. The concussion might burst our eardrums. You gotta be careful when using destruction magic. But I do kinda wanna blow it up. At least one of you has common sense, Ava said, rolling her ghastly eyes. You're kidding, right, my filly said. I'm an idiot compared to mommy. I just don't know everything, I'm impatient, and I like explosions, I said. And seriously, fuck this place. At least on that, we can both agree, Ava said, finally smiling. What's on the other side of the middle door? Taya asked. A short hallway, followed by an elevator shaft. She nodded and pulled the door back, then carefully set it against a wall. Ready when you are. Thank you for coming to help me, Taya, I said as I started walking again. Facing the bunker again on my own would be, difficult. Right, just pretend I'm not here, Ava said. I'm trying, but it's harder when you talk, I said. We finally got to the elevator shaft and I peeked up. I'm not really sure how to go about this one. The elevator is gonna fall when I start going up the ladder. I'm honestly not sure your legs will be able to climb it. If we pull the elevator down now, the shockwave might destroy enough of the rusty ladder that we can't move up. Let me see if I can teleport, Taya said. Nothing happened. She went cross-eyed to look at her horn. It, isn't working. What if I ride on your back, catch the elevator when it falls, then slice it apart so we can drop it without hitting either of us? Works for me. I knelt down so she could latch onto me, then carefully stood. She was just on the verge of being too heavy and climbing the ladder wasn't going to be fun. Good. Yep. If possible, use magic to hold the ladder rungs in place, too, I said. As old as they are, they might collapse under us both. That gives me an idea, she said with a scary tone. What kind of idea? I asked as I finally started climbing. I can rip these things from the wall when we're done and bring them with us. If we run into another shaft like this where you can't fly, I can let you use them to climb. You can't just create magic rungs. The elevator finally started rushing towards us, so she concentrated on it instead of talking. That let me focus on holding on, so I wasn't complaining. About a minute later, the elevator was in pieces at the bottom of the shaft and we were finally at the top. You work together well, Ava said. Is this coma for you or for her, Nav? Yes. Was this the orientation center? It was, she said with a nod. We were taken into a theater and shown the laws of the bunker along with all of the highlights and other information we needed to know. Unfortunately, it didn't include anything about rapist priests, mass starvation, or cannibalism. That's how they lure you in, I said with a nod. When I came here, I passed through the theater. The ghosts used it as psychological warfare, so we're using Taya to get through it quickly. We started moving over to the only open door, which led to the theater of horrors. There's another door on the far side of the theater. You need to cut through it as quickly as possible because the room will start affecting us as soon as we get inside. Would destroying the projector help? Ava asked. It should be simple for magic to crush it, should it not? It probably would, I said. Taya, at the back of the theater will be a projector. When the movie starts, that's where the light comes from. If we don't get through quickly enough, can you crush it? Are you really just gonna make me do everything? Taya asked. Consider it your chores, I said. Just a. Uh, don't tell any of the normal ponies that your chores include digging through haunted bunkers and killing things. K. We finally got into the shitty room of horrors. As soon as we got up to the seats, the projector kicked on, only to get turned into a ball about the size of an orange. Your chores are so easy, mommy. Good. Just know that there's a lot more coming, including some combat, so don't go overboard. This is an endurance run. Got it. Without the projector, 
the feeling of unease in the room was gone. Taya quickly had the door open and we continued on to the catwalk with the map. This is where I first realized how large the bunker was, Ava said. I have no idea how they built it in secret. They weren't the only ones, I said. I know there was at least one in America and another in Europe. The two we've been to so far were probably only held in place by the spirits residing within. So what's our path? Taya asked. This path takes us to the park. Once we get there, we go to the church, then up to the command center. From there, we'll go through the living quarters and run into a boss named Ivan. Ivan. Ava gasped. That butcher. The very same. He looks extremely scary, but he has no idea how to fight. After we get past him, we'll come to an iron forest with a hostile hunter. After the forest is more hallways, then the mall, theme park, medical, and finally industrial with the slave master. The slave master injured me, Ava slowly said. And Artyom must have had to face the hunter and the butcher himself. Assuming they were still alive at that point. We'll start running into hostile spirits when we get to the park. Ava, how well do you know this place? Most of my time was spent roaming through hallways. If you can get us to the exit faster, I'd be grateful. You just want to be rid of me quicker, don't you? No, the bunker was traumatic and I don't want to subject my filly to it for longer than necessary. I also don't want to subject myself to it for longer than necessary. I might even stop blaming you for trying to take my body. Humph. The path you took is the fastest available, minus all the aimless wandering you were forced into. I can cut that down. Between me and your filly, we can get through here in no time. Allow me to be your guide through this valley of darkness. Okay, Virgil. Shall we progress to the next layer? She smirked. Still a religious reference, so I win. Right this way, Lady Navarone. There's an elevator at the end of the catwalk. We started walking again, Taya's hooves clanging against the metal floor. So how do you feel about mommy's forced transformation, my filly asked. Such a thing is an affront of nature, Ava replied. It is unfathomable to be parted from the body given to us by our lord. I understand your pain, Nav. Shit sucks hella hard, but I finally got a light at the end of the tunnel. Speaking of which, we were at the end of the walkway, in front of the open elevator. I pulled my sword out and pried the elevator back, then jiggled it a few times before pulling the sword out and stepping back. A few seconds later, the cable broke and it fell down a floor. Knowing everything that's coming makes this much easier, Taya said. Oh yeah. And having people with me makes it a lot less spooky. Even if, you know, one of them is a ghost. Thank you for not discriminating, Ava said. Now shall we? I knelt down so Taya could hop on my back. When she was secured, I started climbing again. We're going to run into a fucked up little girl right outside the elevator. Smoke that bitch on sight or she might eat us. Are you sure we can't reason with them? Taya asked. Maybe Ava could talk to them or something. Fine. Be prepared to smoke them on sight. We finally got to the top. Anything out there? Ava. She floated out the door and looked around. I see the girl. She's hidden in the gloom a few meters away. At the moment, she looks normal. Right, I forgot it's also really dark in there. The flashlight won't cut it. Taya, light. She summoned a small ball of light that expanded when we finally slid into the large room. With the light, we could easily see the girl skipping toward us with a smile on her face. Ava, you're back. When she got close and saw us, she skidded to a halt. Living. How? Be at ease, little one, Ava said. They are trapped here and merely seek to escape. I am guiding them through. You can't. Although. The pony is super cute. She teleported forward to hug Taya, making my daughter squeak and start shivering. I ripped my sword out to stab the bitch, 
but Ava grabbed the hand with the sword and somehow stopped me. She's so warm and fuzzy. I'm supposed to eat the living, but I couldn't hurt something this cute. When she let Taya go, Ava finally released me. Shall we continue on, then? Ava asked. Taya immediately jumped to my side, shivering. I put my hand on her head and started walking. The church is not too far, thankfully. I have a feeling we'll run into a few more spooky scaries, I said. Taya, be ready. I doubt they'll be as, friendly. She was so icy, Taya whispered. So do you intend to run through here or do you intend to fight? Ava asked. If it's hostile, we kill it. If we can't kill it, we stop it. If we can't stop it, you make faces at it while Taya and I run. Understood, oh fearless leader, she said, almost sounding amused. I should note that they'll probably be drawn by the light. Good. It's time for some payback. That made my filly giggle. Payback for what? The little girl asked. I have a grudge against the undead. If you weren't with Ava and also cute, I'd sick my filly on you. Something that cute can't be mean. She wouldn't hurt me, she'd just cuddle me. Ty rolled her eyes and made the girl's head explode. Thankfully, her lifeless corpse fell to the ground instead of moving to attack us. Sorry, I couldn't deal with that anymore. She wasn't hostile. Ava said. Your mother's rule only included hostiles. She's undead. Of course she's hostile. Come on, mommy. Back me up on this. Taya, don't go around exploding the heads of people you don't like. Self-defense only unless you have permission. But since we've determined that you can kill the undead, I'll let you handle most of the small fries, since my sword only works on one at a time. We'll work together against the bosses. Makes sense, I guess. I hear shuffling. End of part 1